What is up everyone? Today I am going to be doing the history of my bookshelf challenge that was started by Emma Books. I will link her original video with all the original rules and everything down below. I was tagged for this challenge by Kat. I'll definitely leave her channel down below also so that you can go check her video out. I'm so happy to be tagged. I'm so ready to do this. Excuse any noise that you hear. My family is like out and about in the house doing things so I'm sorry. But the first thing I'm going to do is tie myself and pick out all the books from each prompt and then I'm going to tell you guys a short story about like each one. So let's see how fast I can pick out these books. And I followed a tip from Emma. I taped it onto my bookshelf so that I can like have the prompts right here um, whenever I need to like hurry up and look at them. Okay, so the first prompt is the oldest book on your shelf. So the oldest book on my shelf, oh no, this is going to be really hard because I don't know. Um, here's this Harry Potter. It's like my first edition. It's like janky and everything. I have a ton of new copies, but here's like my very first one. So this is probably like the first book book that I like got from anybody. So there's number one. Number two, book you read in 2013. I know what I want to do for this one. Where are they? Chronicles of Vladimir Todd. This is like the best series. I really love this series to this day, to this day. So I'm going to go with this one. Um, book you read in 2014. Okay, this this one was gonna work. I read this one in 2014. A book you read in 2015. Oh, duh. Divergent. Duh. Okay. A book you read in 2016. I know I'm gonna have to go with The Hunger Games because, fun fact, this book came out a long time ago, but I was very late to it, so Hunger Games. There we go. A book you read in 2017. 2017 was the year I graduated. City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I read this, I remember, because I read it the summer that I graduated, so City of Bones, yes, okay. 2018, okay, a book I read last year. This should be easier. I'm just staring at it, so I'm gonna go with Renegades because I read this last year, and it's the first thing I saw, okay. A book you read in 2019, A Very Large Expanse of Sea. I read this at the beginning of this year. I freaking love it. A book you've read more than once. I've read Twilight so many times, we're gonna go with Twilight. Number 10, a book you waited over a year to be published. I'm great. This is making a mess. Okay, but The Last Life of Prince Alistair, we're gonna go with that. Book you read away from home. Shadow and Bone, I read this on vacation um, this summer. The book you got someplace special. Here we go. We got one of my church books, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I, this is a, somewhere, I got this at a special place for sure. Okay. A book that made you cry. Crooked Kingdom, we all know why. Okay, a book you read in one sitting. Eliza and Her Monsters, I read this in absolutely one sitting. A book that was a gift, Red, White, and Royal Blue. Did I say Royal? Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Number 16, round 16, a book you read before owning. We're gonna go with Death of a Salesman, because I had to read it for class and I didn't own it and it was an ordeal. Okay, a book you lent to someone else. Carry on, I've lent this to multiple people, so that's gonna work. Number 18, a book that has been damaged. Well, we're gonna just have to go with Six of Crows. You'll see why in a little bit. Number 19, a book you got on sale such discounted. Gorgeous copy of A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Um, we're gonna go with that. A book you read with someone else. I'm gonna go with God's Grave because I buddy read this with Mel, and yeah, so that counts. A book you associate with a song. I'm gonna go with The Darkest Minds for this one. A book you associate with food. Is it this one? Which one has the scones? You know what I'm talking about. We're just gonna go with Clockwork Prince. Okay, number 23, a book you bought years ago you wouldn't buy now. This one is like spilling the tea, okay. Sadly, for this one, I'm gonna have to go with The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. A book you associate with a specific time in your life. For this one, I'm gonna go with The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. Number 25 is a book you used to like but don't anymore. I'm gonna go Flat Out Love by Jessica Park for this one. Number 26 is the newest book on your shelf and I gladly know what I'm gonna do for this one. That one is What I Lost by Alexander Ballard. Yes, we're done, got the time. That took me 13 minutes, literally. That is it, that's not that much. That's better than what I thought I was gonna do. But yeah, now I'm gonna tell you guys the stories behind these books, okay. <sighs> okay, I'm kind of out of breath and now my shelves are a mess and my room is a mess, but it's fine, you know, it's fine, okay. So number one was the oldest book on your shelf and for that I picked my very first copy of Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone. This one 
is a pretty old copy like the pages are really aged hand um my grandma got it at like a used bookstore um the spine has like the like metallic like um embossed cover which if you look closely to like the new harry potters that are like this they're not embossed they're just like flat um i could show you but i'm not gonna waste my time but yeah so this one is just an old copy and it's like my first ever version of harry potter that i got when i was younger so it's special and yeah so oldest book on my shelf number two is a book you read in 2013 and for that i went with the um chronicles of Vladimir todd this is the first book it is called eighth grade bites it is by heather brewer and i read this in middle school I absolutely loved this book. It is, um, oh my gosh, I used to write in my books. Can you see that? It says, owned by Andrew Castillo. <laughs> you can't even see it. And it says in parentheses, I'm a vampire. Oh my god. <laughs> How come you can't see it? Can you see that? It says, I'm a vampire. <laughs> I'm done. If that doesn't tell you, like, look how beat up this copy is. Like, this is a well-loved book, okay? So this book is all about Vlad. He is um, in eighth grade and he realizes that he is a vampire and it's him coping with that and also him coping with the fact that he likes this girl and like this whole series is just really really good. If you have read this let me know down below because you're like my best friend. I freaking love this series like a lot. Number three, a book you read in 2014 that I went with The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I read so much John Green when I was younger. I have, like a lot of these pages like in the front like tab like I don't know I just was like obsessed with John Green. I think everybody went through that phase. Um, I think everybody on booktube has probably read The Fault in Our Stars and like it was just like iconic like who hasn't read this okay so um yeah so number four is a book you read in 2015 and for that i went with divergent by veronica roth i was pretty late to the game this book came out in 2011 but i didn't read it until later um when i got back into reading pretty much i know we all forget about four all the time but he was like one of the best male ya characters if i do say so myself he was like the original like bad boy that has like a problem with his like past and his parents and like a tortured past you know four was like the original okay <laughs> so number five is a book you read in 2015 and for that i went with the hunger games by suzanne collins like i said i was behind to the game um for a lot of the like dystopian praise but my mom actually read this and then she like gave it to me and she was like you have to read this like it's so good and i was like okay like you hardly ever read anymore so if you're gonna tell me it's good I'm gonna believe you and I'm gonna read it. So that's why I read The Hunger Games and um, the prequel's coming out next year and I'm so excited. I wanna reread them. Like, this is actually very good. Like, I don't hear what anybody says. Dystopian is like a good genre and The Hunger Games is a very good series. So, 2015 Me is coming out right now. <laughs> okay, so number six is the book you read in 2017 and for that I went with City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. So I graduated in 2017 and I remember going camping that summer and taking this book with me because I was like, I'm going to force myself to read it because I'm going to be camping, I'm going to have nothing else to do. And I distinctly remember laying in a hammock when I started City of Bones, like the very beginning of my Shadowhunter journey. And I remember falling in love with it, couldn't wait till I got home that week so I could go buy the next one and like falling down the Shadowhunter like tunnel, like well, like craze, okay? And I don't know, I'm really grateful for that year. I'm really grateful that I decided to pick it up because I can't imagine my life without all my Shadowhunter books and without like Jim Carstairs, you know, and like the Herondells. Like I just, I just can't imagine that. So number seven is a book you read in 2018. And for that, I'm going to go with Renegades because I just read this last year. Um, and Renegades is about Adrian and Nova. One is a villain, one is a superhero, and it's all about them figuring it out about each other, and it's really cool. Um, and yeah, Supernova just came out this year, so I wrapped up the trilogy, and it was really good. I really loved it. Um, I don't think enough people talk about it, enough people read it, so if you haven't, like, go check it out. Number eight is a book you read in 2019. For that, I went with A Very Large Expensive Sea by Tahedda Mafi. I love this book. It is so good. It has very good, like, Muslim rep in it, and it just is a overall a very good book. And if you haven't read it, you're, like, way behind. You are missing out greatly, and I know not a lot of people have talked about this book. 
but I adored it so much. I definitely recommend it to anybody who's looking for a great standalone, a great contemporary to put you like in a good mood, get you out of reading slump. Um, definitely a very large expensive C would be a good one for that. Okay, number nine is a book you read more than once. For that, I'm gonna go with Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. This is also like a very um, well-loved copy. Like it's pretty beat up. Um, but I mean, I've read this book about seven times, like the whole series seven times, just because this book had a lot of emotional attachment for some reason when I was in high school. And like, I mean, I know the reason it's kind of goes a little deep. Maybe I'll talk about it one day on my channel, but like, I don't really want to get into that right now. We don't got the time and I don't feel like getting emotional. But just know that this book meant something to me, which is kind of weird because it's Twilight and it's not that serious. But just like the timing that I read it, you know, just had a big effect on me and it helped me out of um, a lot of tough situations, I think. So yeah, I read it more than once for sure. Number 10 is a book you waited over a year to be published. And for that, I picked The Lost Life of Prince Alistair by Alexandra Jabrakin. This is the sequel to um, The Dreadful Tales of Prosper Redding, the Prosper Redding series. This is a middle grade um, series and it's really good. Um, I don't usually read middle grade, but I've said it before, I will read anything Alexandra Jabrakin puts out. And since she released this middle grade, it's really, it's really fun. And it's a great read for like October and Halloween time. But if you haven't checked out this series, I definitely recommend if you are in the mood for a good um, kind of creepy, kind of witchy um, middle grade series. Number 11 is a book you read away from home. For that, I picked Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. I just read this um, this past summer, actually. I read the whole um, Grisha trilogy and I went on a vacation with my boyfriend and his family and I went um, out of town and I remember I took a picture of this book right next to a pool because we stayed in a house that had like a big pool and it was really nice it was really fun um, and I took this and I read it a little bit um, when we had downtime in between us going swimming and whatever. Number 12 is a book you got someplace special and for that I picked um, Mother Teresa of Calcutta a personal portrait by Leo Mossberg. Um, this book was given to me by my church sometimes they have like books that people have like donated a bunch of copies to to give out to like the parish or um, our like different kind of organizations will um, sponsor and buy it for everybody to get like a free copy. I love Mother Teresa. I love anything I can read about her. I think it's an amazing, beautiful story and this is actually a pretty good book. So I was glad that I picked it up whenever they were giving them out at my church. Number 13 is a book that made you cry. For that I picked Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Um, listen, if you don't know why um, I cried in Crooked Kingdom, Go read Six of Crows and then read Cooker Kingdom and when you find out, come back to this video and you know, comment a teardrop, comment a sad face because if you don't know, lucky you, but when you find out, you will also be crying with me. So let's just, let's just leave it at that before I get even more emotional and thinking about all the crows or not all the crows. Okay, yeah, let's just, okay. Number 14 is a book you read in one sitting. For that, I picked Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. Um, I remember distinctly sitting on my couch and reading this like all day, like I had a day and a night that I was just off and nobody was home. So I picked up Eliza and Her Monsters because I had heard it was really good and it had really good mental health rep. And so I read it all in one sitting and it was like the first time I got to do that this year. I read it earlier in the year um, and I hadn't done that that much. So I was really happy to like sit there and read a book nonstop and not be interrupted. It was really great. Um, Analyzing Her Monsters is a really good story. It's a really good contemporary um, standalone if you're looking for a fun read that has like some good hard hitting topics and that has like mental health rep. Eliza and Her Monsters is the book for you. Okay. <laughs> Number 15 is a book that was a gift and for that I picked Red, White, and Royal Blue by um, Casey McQuiston. This is her debut novel. This is also a book that I received um, from my Amazon wishlist from my friend Brophy that I met on Twitter. I freaking love her for this. Um, I've been wanting this book because all the hype that's been like talked about around it um, and I want to get to it next year, like very early next year because I'm missing out, I think. I think I'm going to really love it. Um, and I'm just so grateful to Brophy. Like, again, thank you, Brophy. You did not have to do this. And I just like, from the bottom of my heart, thank you because that was so sweet. And I was so surprised when I got it. Um, it opened it up to like this pink, beautiful book. Like, it was just the best day. And I'm just really thankful. Number 16 is a book you read before owning. For that, I picked <laughs> Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. I was on a time crunch, as you can tell, as you saw. But we read this in class and I remember reading it out of a textbook and then I was like, wow, 
I kind of liked it. So when I came into the bookstore and I saw it, I was like, well, I might as well just buy it to like grow my classics collection. I don't even know, okay. Number 17 is a book you lent to someone else. And for that, I picked Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I lent this book out to two people, my friend Catherine and my friend Kendall. And I always like recommend it to people because I work at a bookstore. I always recommend it to people who come into the bookstore because I think it is like a cute and fun read. Wayward Son, on the other hand, <laughs> yikes, but I'm just kidding. But yeah, Carry On. <laughs> So number 18 is a book that has been damaged and for that I have to go with Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I know I have a lot of Lee Bardugo in here. I wish this one wasn't in here because um, I was mad because my dog chewed the inside and ruined it and damaged it. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Ollie. And also up here and it was just so sad because he did that before I went to meet Lee Bardugo and I got it signed like with my name and personalized everything and it was like a busted up copy because my dog chewed on it so that's just great look if you're watching this and you're not subscribed just go ahead and subscribe you know because we're almost at 500 so go ahead y'all that's my boyfriend Seth y'all gotta listen to him subscribe give me to 500 okay <laughs> Number 19 is a book you got on sale or discounted, and for that, I'm gonna go with this Easton Press copy of um, A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I work at a bookstore, like I've said, and this came in and I just had to buy it because it's an Easton Press edition of A Tale of Two Cities. Like, how could you pass that up? I don't know, but it's just this really gorgeous copy and it has like the hologram inside and it says it's an Easton Press. Um, and the pages are like gold on the sides and it's just really gorgeous. And it's not very often that you find an Easton Press just like out there in bookstores. So I'm really proud of this. And the fact that I got it on sale was like even better because these run a lot of money. But I did get it discounted. So A Tale of Two Cities. Number 20 is a book you read with somebody else. And for this, I picked God's Grave by Jay Kristoff because I did a buddy read on this with Mel um, over at Girl Read. I'll link her channel below because I love Mel. Um, and we had a lot of fun buddy reading Nevernight and God's Grave. And it was just really fun. And I also love Mia Corvier. I love Jay Kristoff. I love the entire Nevernight series. So I always have to talk about it whenever I can. Number 21 is a book you associate with a song. And that is The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Brown. <laughs> The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. I associate this book with the song Wouldn't It Be Nice by the Beach Boys. If you've read The Darkest Minds and you know what happens, or if you've read the whole like trilogy, you really understand why Wouldn't It Be Nice by the Beach Boys like perfectly encompasses The Darkest Minds like so well. Like it perfectly encompasses like Liam and Ruby and Chubb's journey and I just like want to cry thinking about it and every time I hear that song like, sometimes I play it in my car and I just like think of my babies of my children and I cry like I don't think that's okay. Like that's rude of Alexandra Bracken to do that and she's the one that pointed out that that song like reminded her while she was writing The Darkest Minds. So I get sad. If you've read this, go listen to Wouldn't It Be Nice and cry with me. Number 22 is a book you associate with a food. And for that, I picked Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. Specifically because the scene where, um, it's not a spoiler by the way, you won't be spoiled. Where Sophie finds scones under freaking Gideon's bed. And it was just the most funny thing that I've ever read. And if you know about the scone scene, then you know about the scone scene. And if you don't, go read the Infernal Devices because they are amazing. Also, somebody fact check me if it's even in Clockwork Prince or if it's in Clockwork Princess, because I honestly don't remember, but the scone scene, okay. <laughs> Number 23 is a book you got years ago that you wouldn't buy now. For that, I picked The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. I only bought this book because Daniel Radcliffe was in the movie. I've never read this book. It's like a tiny book. Like, I could have read this so many times, and I think I tried to read it, like, once or twice, but I just never did. It's, like, a horror book, so maybe I will read it one year, like, around, like, October. But honestly, like, if I saw it in a bookstore now, I would not pick it up at all. But it has Daniel Radcliffe on it, and, like, I'm obsessed with Harry Potter, so to me, Daniel Radcliffe is just Harry Potter always, so <laughs> that's why I bought this. <laughs> Number 24 is a book you associate with a specific time in your life. For that, I picked The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, the first in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. And this is also like a pretty beat up used copy, you know, because I've had it for a long time. Um, but this book just brings back like so much nostalgia because I mean, when I was younger and I was just like a reader and like I didn't have to work, I 
would get home from school and all I have to do is just read and like not worry about anything and that's just a time in my life that I like distinctly think about sometimes and I'm like wow like imagine not having any worries imagine not having any responsibilities and just being able to read and like that was when I fell in love with reading and I read the series and like I don't know it was just a good time in my life for being a reader and I just miss those times when everything was more simple um, and I think about them a lot, so, um, The Lightning Thief will always have, like, a special place in my heart. Number 25 is a book you used to like but don't anymore. For that, I picked Flat Out Love by Jessica Park. This book is a, like, romance contemporary. Um, I read it, I think, earlier this year or late last year. It's just literally just, like, a love story, and it actually makes no sense. If you've ever read it, like, I know you know what I'm talking about. It wasn't that bad, like... I, I'm not mad that I read it, but I don't really like it anymore, and I would not read it again, and I would honestly, like, give it away to somebody. Like, if you wanted this book, I would be like, take it. Take it off my hands. But, um, yeah, so I'd probably get rid of it because I don't need it, but it wasn't the worst. It just definitely wasn't the best. It wasn't anything special. It's just like very bland. So finally, number 26 is the newest book on your shelf. And for that, I am going with What I Lost by Alexander Ballard. This book was given to me yesterday. I got it, I received it in the mail from my Amazon wishlist. And it was sent by Lucy on Twitter. I'm very thankful for her sending it to me. She did not have to. It was so nice of her to do that. And I will link her Twitter and her channel. I think she has a YouTube channel. If she does, I will link it down below. Um, so you can go check her out. This was the first book that I ever put on my Amazon wishlist. And I just never got around to getting it. And it is a book that deals with mental health and like um, body image issues. And it always really interested me, but I just never picked it up and I never really saw it in stores. So I found it on Amazon and I was like, okay, if I ever get around to it, I will get it off my list. But she sent it to me and I thought that was so nice. So I was just really surprised and really happy that I finally got what I lost by Alexander Ballard. Okay, that is it. My room is a mess. My shelves are destroyed. But that was the history of my bookshelf and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I got to go wrap some Christmas presents now. I don't know when this video is going up, but I hope you liked it. I forgot that I have to tag people. So I'm going to go ahead and specifically tag Haley from Hayden Books. And I'm going to link her channel down below so you can go check her out. And then I'm going to tag everybody that is in the group chat that I'm on on Twitter. Um, if you haven't done it, go do it. I am looking at you. I know a lot of people in our group chat haven't done this. So like, I'm calling you out if you haven't done it in the group chat. Like, go do this challenge. I'd like to see the history of your bookshelves. But that is all I have to say. Also, if you are watching this and you haven't done it, like I'm tagging you, tell everybody that I tagged you. And yeah, let me know down below if you're gonna do it. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books. But that's all I have to say. So I hope you like this video. Hope you like this video down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Guys, look at this mess that I have to like clean up now. Like this is a freaking disaster. And like, look at my shelves. They're like missing. <laughs> everything they're like missing books everywhere great like i'll be cleaning up my bookshelves and my floor for like the rest of the night but like hope you enjoyed the video <laughs> bye <laughs>